My attendant was with me in the Dominion before I primed. She would have watched the battle unfold and witnessed its outcome. I trust you'll be waiting for me in Tabor, where I can finally introduce you. My attendant was with me in the Dominion before I primed. She- You know how I feel about this. But your brother's stubbornness knows no bounds. I'm starting to think it runs in the family. You know how I feel about this. Ty is right. Your brother is in no condition to travel. That's all I'll say on the matter. It's Mid, Gav, and your uncle we should be thinking about now. Ty is right. Your brother is in no condition to travel. That's all I'll say on the matter. Do you like being struck by thunderbolts from on high? Then don't let anything happen to Mid. Yeah? Do you like being struck by thunderbolts from on high? How are you doing? Here you go. Seen enough? Oh, I wasn't expecting you back. Best of luck out there, Sid. Cole told us everything that happened. It's a bit of a worry that both the Republican and Imperial armies are in disarray. But it was good to hear that the people stood their ground. Cole told us everything that happened. We've sent curse breakers to Martha's Rest, Dalamil, and Northridge. Hopefully they can help maintain the peace. Or at least a semblance of it. We've sent curse breakers to Martha's Rest, Dalamil, and Northridge. Did you see that? Tell me you saw that. There's barely been a shipment in since the skies started boiling. A few more days without a visit and we'll have to start eating the blankets. Oh, the moon. you can help me solve a mystery. I can certainly try. Who's gone missing this time? It's not who, but what. Mid-scales. The ones she made for her workshop. I borrowed them to teach the little ones about weight, and shortly after the lesson, well, they vanished. My first thought was that they'd taken them off somewhere to play, but when I asked, they swore they had nothing to do with their having disappeared. Which almost certainly means they had everything to do with it. Of course. I can only hope the scales turn up on their own then. Preferably in one piece. S it's I bought my witch. Perhaps a visit from Sid will jog their memories. <laughs> I think it just might. Thank you. I don't like to imagine that my pupils would lie to me. But if they have, I'll have no choice but to discipline them accordingly. They were in the atrium when I last saw them. As always. My biggest worry is that the children have somehow damaged the scales, but are wary of asking for help because they think they'll be punished. And if I find out that's the case, I swear I'll take the switch to every last one of them. My biggest worry is that the children have somehow damaged the scales, but are wary of asking for help. I was wondering when next you'd visit. I have compiled some new entries, if you would like to see them. If you have a question for me, I should be happy to answer it. You are always welcome, Clive. 
Sid, did you know that chocobos are far more resilient to the effects of ether than most other beasts? Some say that's one of the reasons they were tamed for use as mounts and sumpters, so that an ether flood wouldn't mean instant death for their riders or drivers. Me, I reckon they built it up over generations. Too many foolish traders driving their birds into floods, and only the toughest surviving. Sid, did you know that chocobos are far more resilient to the effects of ether than most of the beasts? Seems the hideaway has lost its appetite. Sid! Look what the curse breakers brought back from Dalmechia! Said they were all the rage in Dalamil. Looks sort of funny if you ask me. <laughs> I'll be damned. Have you had one before? Something smells good. What are we having? Bombs! And they are good. You should try one. Hey, a bloody great hole in it. Who are the rest? <laughs> it's supposed to be hollow, silly. Haven't you ever seen Drake's Fang? book. Er, you put me in this situation, Clive. You can bloody well get me out of it. I need a hand with a recipe. Are you sure it's me you're looking for? I'm not much of a cook. I'm all the cook will be needing, thank you very much. What I want from you is a little of your time, right? Oh, and uh, perhaps your sword. You remember Ivan's stew, right? Well, despite the look of the thing and that awful stench, people wolf it down. So I thought I'd try making one of these supposed masterpieces myself. Had a peek at the book and gave it a go, but well. It wasn't as straightforward as you'd hoped. Ivan had the same problem. Yeah, but this is my blooming kitchen, and I will not be outdone. So if you don't want to be seen as playing favourites, I suggest you lend me a hand. Fine. Suit yourself. But I'll be telling people who to blame when they come begging for something new. Oh, that black... Air. Are you... Are you... In... Yep. I've never been one to play favourites, Molly. And I would be only too happy to lend you a hand. So, what's on the menu this time? A fried mortress of Skyworm. That's one heck of a name, innit? Recipe seemed easy enough to an old hand like myself. Thought I'd followed it to a tea. Only, turns out Skyworm livers and Drake's mint are not what I thought they were. At least I hope they're not, given the rancid mess they made. Ivan said the recipes in the culinary pilgrimage date back centuries. Who's to say the ingredients even exist anymore? Well, wow. that's a question for a scholar, wouldn't you say? Perhaps you know of one? Kindly old fella who haunts the shelves, maybe? Fine. I'll go and speak to Harpocrates. Perhaps he'll know something. And if he does, I'll see if I can find your ingredients for you. You do that. Lest we forget, you've got a reputation to uphold. I thought I had it all worked out, but I'm buggered if I know where to find Skyworm livers and Drake's mint. Best hope everyone's favourite know-it-all can help us, eh? Seems the hideaway is lost. It's appetite. I thought I had it all worked out, but I'm buggered if I know where to find... There's a storm coming, Sid. Will there be thunder? Norseman Harpocrates. I've come to pick your brain if you don't mind. It's about the book you lent Ivan. Ah, Valicia, a culinary pilgrimage, a classic. 
One of my favorites, in fact. The young man did a wonderful job with the Chancellor's stew. I do hope we shall be able to sample more such marvels in due course. That's actually why I'm here. I don't suppose you know where I might find Skyworm livers and Drake's mint. Ah, so the fabled Sanbriquois delicacy is next on the menu. Delightful. The descriptions of fried mortress never fail to make my mouth water. Now, Skyworm is a somewhat antiquated name for the Wyvern, their ground livers being the paste from which the mortress is made. Dragon livers? Ugh, how very Sambraquois. One would have thought the disciples of Bahamut would have a touch more reverence for their icon's brethren, but apparently not. I believe the specific dragon the recipe demands is the blueback wyvern, said to be the very color of the sea beside which it resides. So we know where to look for our liver. But what about the drake's mint? Saint's bonnet in contemporary parlance, a herb which grows along the North Reach coast. I gather that one can locate the cheerful yellow flowers by their heady scent alone, so I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding them. I may add that people once believed game was best served with the flora that sustained it in life, in which regard fried mortis of skyworm is undoubtedly a typical dish of the time. Meaning that if I find one, I find the other. To Northreach, then. Best of luck, Clive. And do save me a bite once the dish is complete. Knowledge hoarded is knowledge lost. One can only speculate as to why fried mortress of Skyworm might have fallen out of favor. Perhaps the rampant popularity of the dish led to a decline in the blueback wyvern population. Or perhaps fashion is to blame. A sprig of cheerful yellow drake's mint pinned to the lapel was once quite the statement among Sandbrake's fashion-conscious nobility. Regardless, the only place you'll now find both herb and dragon is on the coast near Northreach. Fare thee well, my friend. Gonna do oh. But no more. <laughs> Is everything all right, Goots? You seem more discomposed than usual. I don't know what that means, but, but I'm in a bit of a muddle. Oh, I think Nan might be in trouble and she's... <laughs> it's all right. You can tell me. <sighs> there was a trader came by. One of our usuals, like... Said he'd heard some rotten rumours about her down Dallymill Way. Folk are saying she's been selling to bandits and cutthroats and that. I mean, she's fond of a chance to make a coin or two, aye, but, but she'd never do business with baddies. Especially not the kind who go hurting people who haven't done out. I wanted to ask her about it myself, but well, I'm scared she'll give us a tongue lashing. She'd never give your tongue a lashing, though, would she? Aye. You don't want to know what it's like. Believe me.
Rutherford? Wasn't that the name of my uncle's manservant? Why would he be at Martha's rest? Don't worry. I'll speak to her. Oh, thanks, Clive. You'll let me know what she says, won't you? Of course. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding. Nan sometimes sells swords and that. Uh, but never to anyone who's not a friend of ours. That's how it's been for as long as I've known her. You don't think it's true what people are saying, do you? Nan sometimes sells... I heard the Emperor was impaled on his own son's spear. We're all gonna die! You hear me? What do you reckon we should do? I say we should just tell Miss Shirley. You'll get us all striped. I'm telling you, I can fix them. Sid! Out of your studies, I see. And what is that? It's not a set of scales, is it? No. Of course it isn't. Well, not anymore, it's not. <gasps> oh! Then just how long hasn't it been one? We're sorry. But we didn't break them. We just dis dismembered them. Just like Miss Mididol showed us. Miss Mididol? And why would she have you dismembering her creations? Because that's the only way to become a ninja near. Miss Mididol said. The best way I see how something worked is to take it apart and put it back together again. Well then, your work is already half done. Carry on. Uh... About that. The taking apart was easy enough, but it's the putting back we can't work out. Speak for yourself. The heavy thing goes at the bottom. So then... Then... Um... You three need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. So let's have a look at these paths with fresh eyes, shall we? Must have been magic keeping those scales together. It's the only explanation. Must have been magic keeping those scales together. It's the only explanation. All right. Everything here was once part of Miss Mididol's scales. Every piece has its own role to play, and each is just as important as the others. If even one of them is missing, the scales won't work. So let's think about what those roles might be. You already know one of the pieces, the body. Its role is to support everything else. But what of the others? This is called the arm. Why do you suppose that is? It doesn't look much like an arm. You're right. It looks more like a wing. <gasps> like a chocobo wing! You've ridden a chocobo before, haven't you, Sid? Will you teach me to ride one one day? I'll think about it. Now, what do arms do? Hold things. So wait, maybe this arm holds things too? Good thinking. You're on the right track. These round parts are called the pans. You all know what a pan is, don't you? I do. Molly uses them in the kitchens to fry bangers. But these aren't for frying bangers, you idiot. They're for weighing stuff. But what if I wanted to weigh goots? I don't think you'd fit on that little thing. <laughs> Probably not. What are the chains for? Holding the pans up? Well spotted. 
which means something must hold the chains up in turn. This tiny piece is what's called a cogwheel, or gear. Have you ever seen one before? I have. Miss Minidol's dungeon is full of them. Most are on the floor. She puts them in all her inventions. They spin round and round and round and round and... That's right. They're very useful when you want to make things move. Do you remember if there was anything on the scales that moved? I remember the arm moved when I tried weighing an apple. And then somebody ate it. It's not my fault. You shouldn't have tried weighing it before lunch. You know what part's supposed to move and how it's supposed to move. So, let's put the pieces together first, see what doesn't move, and then stick the cogwheel to that. Not a bad idea. You see, it's not so difficult. So, now that we've taken stock of the parts and learned what they do, what do you think? I think we've got it. Then here's what we'll do. You tell me what goes where, and I'll put the scales together. Well, obviously you need to start with the body. All the other pieces fit onto it, don't they? And the arms go on the body, just like real arms. Or wings, if you're a chocobo. And then the arms hold the pans by the chains. Very good. Let's see if that works. There. All finished. Yes! We did it! Well, with Sid's help. <laughs> oh, I just put the pieces together. It was you three engineers who showed me how. That's right. We're Miss Mididol's hairs. Her hairs? Yeah. Hairs for the future. She's showing us her secrets now, so we can help out the hideaway when we're older. What do you think, Sid? Are we almost ready? With a little more help from Miss Mididol and Miss Shirley. I'd say it won't be long at all. <laughs> you hear that? It won't be long. Until then, though, do try to be honest with Miss Shirley. Hey, look. We never used the cogwheel. You don't think Sid forgot about it, do you? Didn't happen to forget anything, did you, Sid? Didn't happen to forget anything, did you, Sid? Is a storm coming, Sid? Will there be... Well, did you solve the mystery? It was as you thought. The children had the scales, or the parts of them at least. They dismantled them to see how they worked. Ah, oh, no, Mid will have my head. Thankfully, she won't. This might even have been her idea. Although I was the one who ended up teaching the lesson. I'm so sorry, Sid. I know how busy you are. I shall see that the children are properly punished. Please, there's no need. Mid seems to have taken the three of them under her wing. She's even calling them her heirs. She'd have them follow in her footsteps. And her father's. I see. Sid. Do you know why Mid has been spending so much time at the hideaway of late? She told me it was because her studies have been interrupted by events in Canva. Is that not true? No, it isn't. The university offered her a commission. In exchange for full tuition, room and board, they asked her to oversee the design of several new war engines. To anyone else it would be an opportunity, but to Mid, who lost both her parents to war. It was a bitter pill, one she was none too keen to swallow. But that should come as no surprise. She's only ever cared about bringing people hope. The very last thing war can be said to do. Which explains her heirs. She's working to give them a better life. And so should I. What's the odd engineering lesson? Ah, oh, you've given them far more than that. And I'm sure they're very grateful.
If Mid is teaching my pupils her secrets, I suppose I should brush up on some of them myself. If Mid is teaching my pupils her secrets, it seems the hideaway has lost its appetite. Lady Karen, how's business? Not nearly as foul as the weather. You're doing good trade then, both in and out of the hideaway? Hmm, can't complain. Wait, what exactly are you getting at? Not once in five long years do you pay my affairs half a care, but here you are today raking me over the coals like a bloody popotto. Just asking. Out of interest. <sighs> All right. <sighs> I'm here because I was told that certain rumors have been circulating. Uh, about you selling weapons to brigands. Oh, are ah, you? Yeah. And who was it who knows me so well as to tell tales of my evil exploits? I... I, I didn't exactly hear firsthand. All I know is that someone in Dalamil has been spreading word to that effect. And what? You believe it? You think I'm profiting off the blood of innocence, do you? Look, I've done things I'm not proud of. Might be there were a time when I turned a blind eye to the wretchedness of the world so I could line my pocket. But that woman is no more. And you'd know that if you'd ever paid the slightest bit of notice. You're right, Lady Karen. I apologize. It was wrong of me to doubt you. No, it was. No. I reckon you've got better things to do than pointing your do-gooding finger at a poor old woman. Of course. Good day. Aye, it's a dangerous world out there. Best I thought you knew better than to put stock in unfounded gossip. What with all the colourful tales attached to your name? Take care. Trouble with your gear, or...? So, will it be? That it? Fine. I spoke with Lady Karen. What did she say? That the rumours were unfounded and that I was a fool for thinking they might hold any truth, along with some other things that made her feelings clear. And while it sounds like she may have done things she regretted in her past, she says those days are behind her. Oh, well, that's good. I knew Nan wasn't caught up in out bad. But why would people say she was? What did she ever do to them? It's not right. No, it's not. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps we'll never know. Well, I'm going to find out. That trader, he said they were all talking about her in Dalamil. So that's where I'm going. I'll find someone who'll tell me, you'll see. Are you sure that's wise? Whoever's spreading these rumors means Karen ill. Oh, right. But that's why you'll be coming with me, isn't it, Clive? <sighs> I suppose it is. I'll find out who's been making up lies about Poe and Anne, and when I do, I, I, I don't know what I'll do, but it won't be pretty. I'll find out who's been making up lies about Poe and
It's like a dream, the four of us out walking like we used to. Enjoying this, are you? Gav and the others could be in danger as we speak. You're right. I'm sorry. Yote is a fine scout. If Canva was attacked, she will already have begun gathering information. Tabor isn't far. We should pick up the pace. You lost, stranger. Wherever you're headed, it's back the way you came. You lost, stranger. Wherever you're headed, it's back the way you came.
A deserter turned outlaw. We were more similar than he knew. Bandits may be no more, but look what they've left us with. with a hard time for them. It shouldn't be too hard to find goods. Are the bad men going to come back? The gentlemen of the town guard are a strapping bum. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know if the pieces that were stolen from my stall were recovered, would you? They were irreplaceable. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know... Could be I know something more. What's it worth to you? Uh, I've got a hundred gill and a chocobo feather. Eh. Clive, listen! I've found someone who says he's heard the rumours about Nan. Have you? Go on. Tell him what you told me. All right. It's like I said. A wizened old crone by the name of Karen's been selling steel to whoever will pay her price, be they knight or knave. Says the more swords and spears she puts in people's hands, the more war they'll wage. And the more war being waged, the more call for swords and spears. And who will they all turn to to keep them in steel? Why, the good Reaper herself. <laughs> and you've seen this Reaper at work. Aye, it just so happens I have. You'll find her right here, plying her trade most days. Here in Delamil? Where exactly? She has a stall here in the market, but if you're not the patient type, you can probably find her at her storehouse on the edge of town. But it'd be a bolder man than me that braved that particular nest of vipers. Feeling bold, traveler? I hope so, for your sake. Now, if that's all, I have places to be. Sorry to have kept you. You don't think Nan's the Reaper, do you? Not unless she's discovered the secret of how to be in two places at once. Eh? What do you mean? Lady Karen hasn't left the hideaway in weeks. So who has been running this stall he spoke of? Good question. I'll go and have a look. And I'll visit this storehouse on the edge of town. All right, but be careful, Clive. You too, Goots. Bandits may be no more, but look what they've left us with. It's a hard time. Mummy, are the bad men going to come back? The gentlemen of the town guard are a strapping bunch. Perhaps. But the gentlemen of the League of Merchants have deeper pockets. Fuck! How the hell did they find it? No one knew where I was keeping that kid. If only everyone here didn't have to look so... glowery! If only everyone here didn't have to look so... I interest you in a new sword? My comrades and I.
And defend Dalamil we shall. I always knew. Meanwhile? Proof, if any more were needed. <sighs> but something tells me we are ever in your debt, Sid. It has long been my habit to keep a watchful eye on the comings and goings around Dalamil. I shall continue to do so, that our people might be warned of any further attacks. I pray that you continue to play your part too. Not of outlaw, but of hero to the hopeless. It has long been my habit to keep a watchful eye on the comings and goings around Dalamil. Time to brave the viper's nest. Just you, is it? <laughs> Thought I might have laid it on a bit thick. It was a fairly unconvincing tale. So, what now? That's up to you. Die a slow death? Or a quick one? Boys, he's all yours. But that sword is mine. <laughs> Leave now, and we can pretend this didn't happen.
So you've done it now. Go on. Tell me what I've done. When the Borgwin finds out you've killed his men, he'll have your head. He only wanted that bull of a manservant, the dim one always clinging to Karen's skirts. You weren't even supposed to be here. Who the hell are you anyway? What were you going to do to him? The Borgwin wanted him to get to Karen. I was only supposed to point the lump in the right direction once he arrived in Dalamil. But then you turned up. Well, go on then. If you're going to end me, end me. You're not worth the effort. Now be gone. Before I change my mind. <laughs> Fucking coward! I need to find Goot. Right now. Get your filthy paws off me, you naughty painted lout! Stop calling me names! And stop spreading them horrible lies about Nan! Huh. Well, that will be easy enough. For they are not lies. Every last word is true. And she must pay for her crimes in blood! Blood! Goot, are you all right? He, he, he's gonna kill Nan! He said she had to pay in blood! After what she did, it is only right. She ruined my life and the lives of countless others. That loathsome harpy's very existence is a crime, and I will not allow it to continue. Goots, was it? I have no quarrel with you, only with your employer. Run along now. You need not pay for her sins. No. No? I don't care what she did. I won't let you hurt Nan. Promise me you won't hurt her, or I'll... or I'll... or I'll kill you myself! Goot, no. Enough, all of you! Karen. But how did you...? <laughs> You're a sight less clever than you think you are, the pair of you. Did you think I wouldn't notice the two of you slinking off together? Well, the whole thing got me thinking, who in Dalamil might bear me a grudge? And a certain snivelling shit I ran afoul of in my fairy years came to mind. Though it was just Bogan back then, wasn't it? I thought the years might have taught you some sense, but I see you're the same pants-pissing craving you've always been. What was it we called you? Wet legs? You! You bitch! Everything that happened... It was all your fault! And now you'll finally pay for what you did to me! Goose, you... If you want a piece of Nan, you'll have to go through me! Fuck! <gasps> you great galoot! Out of the way, I can handle this myself! So, wet legs, you remember what you told me when we last met? An eye for an eye? Wise words, sir. Wise words. And now it's time to collect. Sorry to keep you waiting. Is he... Dead? No. But I reckon he wishes he was. It's an easy going through life, one eye shot of a pair. After all, I should know. You don't mean... 
Oh, don't tell me you didn't notice. Lost it to old wet legs back when we were working the same route. Said I'd stolen from his strong box. I'd done nothing of the sort, mind. But that didn't stop him taking his little revenge. So I took some of my own. Sorry lost everything. His coin, his clients. Always knew he'd be back one day to claim his due. But he crossed a line dragging poor Goots into this. He didn't hurt you, did he? No, Nan. Still got all my arms, see? Legs too. <laughs> but what if he comes back again? What if he does? First we take the other eye, then we work our way down. He'll learn his lesson soon enough. But something tells me the wet legs has learned it already. Right. Let's get you back to the hideaway. You've attracted quite enough attention already. To our Clive. Remind me never to cross you, Karen. If you ever do that again, I'll whip you to within an inch of your life. Run from your master, would you? Nothing like a dish of cold vengeance to foul the gut. Uh, I'm sorry, Nan. I didn't mean to make things worse. I just thought I had to protect you. Like you've protected me. Aye. Well, someone had to. Your parents certainly didn't give a whip for your well-being. Reckon the both of us would be worse off if I'd not taken you on. You've always been me right eye, Goots. And I'd have you stay that way. So don't you dare go looking for trouble again. Well, I will. If you ever need help, I'll do it again, and again, and you can't stop me. Why, you big lump? Fine. Play the hero if it makes you happy. Thanks, Nan. I won't let you down. There's nothing he wouldn't do for you. That's as maybe. But if he's ever to make his own way in life, He'll need to start looking out for himself as well. Till then, he'll need people to watch his back, just like you did in Dallamill. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. Of course. His family. Stop it. You make me one good eye, mister. I don't go thinking that'll do you any favours. A potion today will cost you the same as it did yesterday. Let me tell you a story, Clive. All right. Them rumours wet legs were spreading. Might be they weren't just tails plucked out of thin air. You see, there were a time when I weren't too particular about who I sold steel to, so long as they paid me the right price. Some women lust after blood, others after flesh, but me? I were always one for gold. And to satisfy that lust, I sold to opposing armies, stabbed my every client in the back, made myself the most hated woman in the twins. But then one day... One day I met a man who made me a different kind of offer. Said he'd give me access to a realm-wide community of like-minded individuals in constant need of steel and sundries. On the condition, I sold to him and his alone. Was that the first time you met Sid? Aye and I fell right into his damn trap. He was true to his word, so I ended up being true to mine, and I soon started making the best profits I've seen since taking up the trade, and all without aiding or abetting any outlaws. Except Sid himself, that is. Told me about his plan to topple the Mother Crystals, you know. 
said that with them gone, the realm would want for all manner of things. An opportunity for the likes of me to mint gill. Why, I reckon an enterprising individual could find herself the richest dam in the twins. And that's when he had me. I emptied my stores that day and moved into the Ardaway proper. And the rest, as they say, is ancient bloody history. A dozen years on, and I'm still not the richest dam. <laughs> not for lack of trying, mind. But I can say that I have never been happier. You've all shown me there are some things more precious than gill. That there are. So don't you go messing it all up. Or you'll have me to answer to. Clive. That great lump. No. Take care.
or somewhere nearby. the wyvern's liver. Now I just need to find the herbs. Bright yellow with a heady scent. I think that's everything Molly needs to resurrect her recipe. Better head back. Seems the hideaway's lost its appetite. Can you blame him? So, did you have that word with Tomes then? I did, and he was as helpful as ever. He told me exactly where to look, in fact. And what precisely will I be cooking up? Or is it better not to know? Blueback wyvern liver. And uh, a herb known as Saint's Bonnet. Ah, wyvern livers, was it? Well, at least it weren't actual worms, I suppose. Now then, you stay right where you are. I've got some cooking to do. Let's hope these grand old chefs of yore knew what they were on about. And here we have it. Fried Mortress of Skyworm. Ivan's offered to make sure it's fit for consumption. Well, I say offered. He as good as begged. And rightly so. Is there any higher honor than partaking in a slice of culinary history? So, not fit for consumption, then. What? What witchery is this? The crackle of the crust gives way to an almost violent richness. Yet, it is the piquant kiss of the saint's bonnet that tames this savage dish. It is a tour de force. A force of nature, even. A maelstrom of flavor and sensation. A graceful beast emerging from centuries of slumber. I think he likes it. Well, I can't quite tell with all that nonsense he's talking. But I reckon you might be right. It was decent then, I take it. Decent? It's remarkable. And I defy any man to say a word to the contrary. Sid, might I suggest that you command a party of your finest men and women? to procure a dozen blueback wyverns forthwith. I'll give it some thought. <laughs> 